Let's play a game of never have I ever. <laughs> never have I ever dealt with a veteran nonprofit offering recreational therapy um, with my intake being specifically that I wanted to work on my communication with my son because it can be difficult at times because I get triggered by um, by men, even my own son. I mean, it's sad, but when you have a history of domestic violence and military sexual trauma, you know, sometimes you just... But anyway, never have I ever tried to go to a healing retreat at the last minute because they have a a cancellation last minute spot to fill to make sure their funders just see how much great things they're doing for veterans. And I told them from the beginning it was going to be a logistical feat to get me from California to New Hampshire and coordinate for my son. Then they are surprised when I'm asking to be a part of that conversation. And yes, it was over a bus ticket. They picked, they, they bought not the ideal bus ticket that I would have preferred. And if they had communicated with me, they would have understood that. They didn't give me any parameters that it, they needed to use a certain one or the other. Maybe they're sponsored by one or the other. That's why I asked. But anyway, long story short, um, Pat, there's a guy named Pat who runs, does this, wouldn't communicate with me, was, uh, called me, but didn't leave a message. I had to explain to him why I, why my phone went straight to voicemail, why I need people to leave a message so it can get translated into text. And while I'm telling him that that's the way I need to receive information from me to be able to digest it and act on it, um, he laughed. He laughed and um, said, well, that might, that might have been really good to know in the screening process. And that just set me off because I went in detail about my struggles. That's part of the screening process. And then for them to not have any forethought to implement things like, I'm just supposed to fly across the country and trust this organization with my mental health. And if you know me, that's something I protect as sacred, is my spirit and my soul. And for them not to give a fuck about making me feel comfortable and not, you know, little tiny little accommodation, which I thought I was being clear with, but it was a couple days too late. I, and the thing is, I even offered to pay the whole ticket myself and just get them there. But they wanted it to be their way of how they picked it up, and which is fine, but dude, I told them this is why veterans cancel because if if we get a whiff of any kind of miscommunication or fucking misunderstanding, if I just sit there and explain why I am the way I am, which they think may be difficult, they just don't understand that I struggle. Maybe I look fine on the outside, but... I have to keep my life very ordered just to be able to maintain. And I'm sick and tired of doing all this work for people who don't fucking deserve it. So I am gonna trash talk the fuck out of higher ground. And I don't, I'm not trying to cancel them. I don't give a fuck about cancel shit. I just want people to know the truth about where their tax dollars go and where their donations go. And, you know, how about some reviews? This happened to me 
I was triggered by another man many years ago, probably in the same kind of environment. So it, that brought that all up. How, how the hell was I supposed to know all this shit was gonna come up? Like, I don't have a crystal ball of when, when I'm gonna have a fucking flashback. <laughs> and I don't care that I'm crying. I want to cry. I thought, I thought this, this retreat was going to be very impactful. And I guess my expectations were too high. <laughs> 